The other items in my handout, I'll mention them briefly. We've got a couple of links here. The Vimeo Video School. YouTube is the famous video site, but another competitor is Vimeo. It's another place to upload your video and promote yourself and all of that. The difference there is that that one focuses a little bit more on it being a paid service. You can use, you can watch YouTube all day long completely for free. You're going to sit through ads, but it's free. On Vimeo, um, they have also a, a paid service where you get more features. Now, what, I, what the link that I have here, though, is their video school, a variety of free video tutorials that talk about making good videos. I, didn't, I haven't checked it here today, so let's take a quick look. Mastering the shoot, Live 101, things to check before going live. Vary your camera composition, 10 types of camera shots. Okay, that might be interesting. So if I look at that, extreme wide shot, so I'm standing very far away from my topic. Very wide shot, not as far away, but see how the subject is a lot smaller in a, in a scene. Wide shot is I'm closer to the person, but still showing a lot of the background. Mid shot, you know, waist up. Medium is chest up. Close up is mostly the face. Extreme close up. Uh, getting a good shot of that visine right there. Two people in a two shot, over the shoulder shot. Uh, so behind someone to see some other action point of view. So as if you're looking at things directly from your point of view and explanation. So that's what this uh, link is all about. Various ideas, concepts, tips, and tutorials on how to make good videos. And then people often have comments. Uh, I would look at the comments because people might have links to other uh, other tutorials and other feedback. There's a book that I like, The Ultimate Guide to Building a Channel. It's a low-cost book that you can get from Amazon. Three dollars. If you buy it as a Kindle book, a, a, a book, you know, a digital book. Uh, I guess if you have Kindle Unlimited, you get it for free, paperback. Zero, the audio book, you can get it for free with a free trial. So here's a, here's a, a book that also uh, talks about how to set up your YouTube channel, monetize it, and get views. Final note here, the next frontier, live streaming. YouTube started off as a place to upload completed videos, those have a, that have already been edited. There is now a whole generation of live streaming sites where you share video as it happens. So we've got Periscope, Twitch, and Facebook. Now YouTube has it also, but I'll mention that classic video. Let's see, classic sites where you upload pre made video. YouTube is the big one, Vimeo, Twitter, and then modern video, sites where you stream live, that's tw uh, Twitch, Periscope, but then now you can also do live on Twitter, you can also do live on Facebook, you can also do live on YouTube. Uh, actually, one of the older ones, I remember this one was so hot so long ago, you know, five years ago, uh, Ustream. So these are sites where you turn on your camera, your web camera on your computer, or your camera on your phone, and you go live. That's a whole different topic right there um, because if I already am uncomfortable recording video that I have the power to edit and fix my mistakes, it might even it might be even more difficult to do video where I'm going to have it live and people are going to be watching at that moment and I'm going to be very nervous. But this is becoming extremely popular live video.
ideas for live streaming, behind the scenes, special events, prize giveaways. So you could promote yourself on Twitter, or Facebook, whatever, and say, okay, everyone, don't forget this Saturday, 6 p.m., tune in to my Periscope channel, and then you put the link, because we're going to be doing a giveaway. If you're watching and, and uh, you, you give a thumbs up, you could be entered into the drawing for a free whatever. So it's video that is, that is live. It does get saved, however, so a person can go back and rewatch it. That one, I haven't done it very much for clients because it, it's a whole other set of, of uh, ideas and actions. But briefly, let me show you on my, um, on my personal one. So I went to Comic-Con and I live streamed a lot of it and it got thousands of views lots and lots and lots of people watching it uh, one got very popular and they it had like a thousand people watching at once there was another one with like better this had a thousand, one thousand, one hundred viewers. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's VM Campus again. I'm in the middle of Comic Con. I'm gonna wander around just a little bit to see some cosplay, see what we see. Oh, here we go. We've got Rick and uh, the alien girl that he banged. So you see that little heart that appeared right there? Welcome Someone. Will. Uh, people can give live feedback. They can chat. They can talk. They can give hearts. And um, so you should. Uh, it's just you know, right. Good stuff and lots of views. So that kind of video has its own requirements, and um, we won't really have time to talk about that video. We're gonna that type of video. We're gonna then get into YouTube now. If we have an idea of how to do a little bit of video recording, a little bit of video editing, if we have a little bit of an idea of kinds of videos, well, it's time to look at how YouTube works. Uh, so what we're gonna do is create an account, and then we're going to uh, look at the various nuances and how to use YouTube more effectively. So if you were here a long time ago, two months ago, and you took the, the class where we talked about Google+, Plus, uh, we will be able to, a lot easier, create a YouTube account. Uh, because based on your Gmail account or your Google Plus account, you will create a YouTube account. So if we go to YouTube.com, let's all do this right here. Let's go to, go to your web browser. Let's go to YouTube.com. YouTube is basically um, for two audiences. YouTube is for consumers or creators. Consumers are people that may or may not be logged in with their account who watch videos. That's their main purpose to use YouTube. They're going to watch videos. Creators are people that must have an account and then can upload pre-recorded or pre-made or live video. Creator. Creators can also pay to promote their videos or can make money from their videos. <coughs> you 
it's free to create to to set up a creator account. One email account <coughs> can create and manage multiple YouTube channels. So people, the reason for that, people ask, uh, do I use my personal account or do I use my business account to create this? Uh, it doesn't quite matter because you just need any email address to be able to then uh, create the YouTube channel. On the top right corner, we have sign in. If you click on that, it asks you to sign in with a Gmail account. So if you have a Gmail account, if you previously created a Google Plus account in part one of the class, uh, you want to sign in here. If you don't want to do this in our public computers, that's fine. You can do it at home. But to get the most out of today's lecture, go ahead here. Go ahead then and sign in. Or you can create an account here. When we leave every day, does this computer retain anything we've done here? Or is it when these computers get turned off, it erases everything that you do. And before I leave, I turn off all the computers. Okay, so it's okay to do this. So I'm going to sign in with one of my accounts. Okay, so once you get in, you're going to be in the mode that everyone is in about uh, the um, consumer. So all of these videos here on a variety of topics will appear. You can watch one, then you'll watch another. Okay, well, we want to use this as a creator. So on the top right corner, we have uh, this icon, which may or may not be the icon of your, uh, of your logo. And when you click on that, now when I, when I teach this, this is always a little bit different for a variety of reasons. In my case, I see my channel, Creator Studio switch accounts. Uh, do any of you have, see Creator Studio? Yeah. A few people, yes. A few people, no, maybe. Y yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Click on Creator Studio. Now, because I already have something, it looks like that. Uh, let me just do something here. And you can have one more, more than one account, right? Yes. Uh, yes, in the settings, there's going to be on the top right corner, there's going to be settings. 
for these channels, you can go there and there'll be a spot to delete this. Yes. So after you click this creator, you see hopefully something like this. Maybe you will have a message about you haven't uploaded any videos yet. So, well, we're in create a channel. Okay, if you see a, an item that says create a channel, go ahead and follow those steps. It should be pretty straightforward there. And then, and then it'll create the channel because what happens is we've got an email address, but uh, it's not associated just yet with um, any channel. So if it asks you to create a channel, go ahead and do so. On the left side, there will be a variety of menu items, and actually, they're they're changing. Question? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. They're changing their background. Uh, they're changing their interface very soon. That what I'm showing here is going to change uh, in a few weeks or something. So if it looks very different than what I'm showing you, let me know because again, they're they're changing it. Oh, it's up here, YouTube Studio Beta. So I'm not going to click on that yet, but this is what you would see. There's a dashboard video manager, etc. I'll make some quick notes about what each of these menu items are and then how to use them. YouTube Creator Studio Interface. After you log in and click on your icon at top left, You'll see this. So we've got dashboard, a quick overview of views, likes, comments, etc. Video manager, where you edit, delete your videos, and playlists. I'll cover what playlists are very soon. Live streaming, where you set up a live feed. So we can upload videos that exist, and we can do live video. If I've got a web camera, or if I've got the YouTube app, I can go live on my phone, talking to people live. Community, where you see subscribers. Comments, inbox. You can communicate with people one-on-one -on, -one on YouTube. You find it here. Channel, settings, like monetization. Analytics, stats on your videos. And this is really cool because it tells you demographic breakdown like in gender, location, retention rate, meaning how long did people pay attention to your videos. And uh, knowing that then lets me create better videos in the future. Translations. So YouTube can automatically transcribe your videos. However, depending on your pronunciation and your accent or dialogue, it may be a it may be effective or not. And these captions, these trans transcripts are are useful because sometimes people want to read what you're saying or can only read what you're saying. Let's say you're in class and you want to watch a video while my lecture is going on, well, you plug your headphones in to hear the video and, and hear my lecture. Let's say you don't have headphones. You can watch a video, and if they have the, the transcript, the caption set up, you can read what the person is saying on the video. Uh, but again, the automated version is, is not perfect, although I, I have had a lot of good luck with it in that it does understand what I'm saying, although when I talk about things like uh, technology and such it doesn't understand. Uh, we're gonna write this code in C++ and it doesn't understand that and it writes weird stuff. Translations are that you can have captions, you can have transcripts and they're in different languages. Now it does not do that automatically. If I uploaded my video in English it will not create a version in Spanish 
or Japanese or Tagalog. I have to provide one myself. And I don't know if they still do it, but there was a paid service where you can pay YouTube to create a translation in different languages. I never did it. I don't know the price of it. It's probably not that cheap because it is a complicated thing. This is where you manage closed captions. The text that appears at the bottom of the video. And create where you get free music. So let's look at that first for a moment. Under Create, Audio Library. Browse and download free music for your project. thousands of songs that are free for me to download and use in my YouTube videos and you can organize them by genre so show me all holiday themed music A little early for Christmas but you know how the stores are so we can go into holidays, uh, we can go into mood, so I want some funky mood music for my video. We've got instruments, I want to focus on drums. This one's useful over here, duration. I've got a video that lasted four minutes, so I can go to show me songs that are four minutes so that the music plays in synchronization with my video. You can combine it, of course. Four minutes long, that is in the mood of angry. There's only one. And then lastly, attribution. Whatever you choose in these filters, the thing that I recommend is to set your attribution to attribution not required. Some of these tracks have a little person right here because these are, these are songs that you need to attribute, meaning you need to give credit where you got the song. So this one over here, Exotic Battle. Maybe it will work really well in my video. But what I need to do is, it says you're free to use this song in any of your videos, but you must include the following in your video description. So you have to copy and paste this little chunk right here and paste it into the description of your video. Or else you're violating the terms. And what could happen is that your, that your video is removed. You violate the terms too many times, and then you get removed from YouTube. Yes? Um, would you um, be allowed to use bits of those and get in between uh, what they would say? Yes, uh, you'd be able to use all or parts of the video. Um, if you then uh, pick one of these with attribution, you have to credit it. But if you pick one without attribution, you don't have to. Yes. But you're just uh, doing the attribute in the description. You're, it's not like it's going to be on your video in the title or exactly. Yeah. Only in the description. Deal, the reason it's a big deal, big big deal for me is I don't want an extra step to do that I'm going to forget to do. I need to have in mind, I need to record the video, I need to edit the video, I need to put the video, I need to upload it, I need to optimize it, I need to write keywords and descriptions sure. and everything else I'm going to talk about. And then I also have to remember to put this attribution, which is not complicated, but it may come back and bite you if you don't. Sure. But is there, I mean, what, is there a significant difference between the quality of the music on the attribution? I mean... Not at all. I mean, are, you, are you getting like personalities that you've heard of or, or 
with all of these tracks they're not they're they're like uh music that it's generic music created so that you don't violate copyrights even with the attribution one so none of these are going to be like real music like from the beatles or or m&m or whatever uh they're all going to be a style of that kind of music but it's not going to be real quote unquote music but there's no difference between the quality attribution or not it's just that i personally i think it's a little speed bump that i wish to avoid so i personally say just show me results of attribution not required and it's going to exclude some but I feel there's enough that makes up for it. Um, so we can do searching and see what comes up over here. So a variety of music to use on your projects. Uh, over here under music policies, it's like one of the most worthless thing that, things I've ever seen uh, on YouTube. Um, music policies. This directory lists songs and their current policies set by the copyright holders. So if I wanted to use um, Gangnam Style, the hot music from a few years ago, this says... Uh, if you're using this song, you can use it as a cover song, you can use it in your video, but ads will appear on your video. So someone else's ads will appear on your video if you use this song. The point of that then is that they make money off of your video because you used their song and they've allowed it there. Let's see over here. The but stuff. they're allowing it. Yes. You don't have to do anything. That was my question earlier, is why am I seeing copyrighted audio on these videos that are, you know, somebody at the beach with Gangnam Style, so it's, you know, so some of these songs, which are copyrighted, they won't allow you to do if you're willing to let the ad follow. Yeah, so in some degree right there, exactly that one, they're profiting off of people using that song. Compared to this one right up here, it says, this song is not available. So if that one then hits that policy, you can't have that song. Right, okay. Now, okay. most... That, that would explain a lot to me. Okay. Because okay. I have some that are copyrighted, and I nothing happens, and some that have been blocked, and, mm -hmm. I, and now I understand why. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the policy is kind of weird. Because, I mean, it's just for fun. It's not for business, and I didn't know that there was... Hmm. Okay, here's okay. this Barry White song. I can have it, but then it'll have an ad. Here's one that's interesting. This one says, playback, blocked in 245 countries. Advertising can appear. Now, most of us didn't know that there were more than 200 countries. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't tell you what those countries are. Oh, actually it does, look at that. So I cannot play, so people in Mozambique cannot hear my, song, <laughs> my, my video, unfortunately, or Togo. Now the, the thing with that is, the, the, thing, with, the thing with that is, uh, yeah, United States Virgin Islands. The thing with that is that uh, some countries would be able to see my music, my, my video with that copyrighted song and some wouldn't. But out of 245, it's almost like they're all blocked. So again, what's the point? Yeah. Could you two, um, arbitrarily put ads on your video? Not, uh, not arbitrarily, no. On your own videos, it will happen if you use some of these copyrighted songs, but it shouldn't put ads unless you want to make money off of your so video, you check, too. If you check the, that particular song or this music policy, then, and it says nothing about ads or anything, then they won't put an ad on it. That's true, but let's give it a try because most most songs are not going to be usable. For example, uh, what's it called? I, I want to or I want to hold your hand. From the Beatles. I want to hold your hand. Uh, I want to hold your hand. The Beatles. Okay, what do we say here? This song is not available. This is what I'm saying. Like 99% of the music that we want to use is not going to be available. And if it is available to use, it's going to be that they're going to put their ads on it. And go this way. Okay, show me if you have any Ramones music. And it will, and most of these, I believe, also say not available. 
here, let's create Bob. You can use it, but it's blocked in 245 countries. Is the US included? United States minor outlying, United States. Yep, so it's blocked in the US. So again, what's the point? It, it's allowed in you know six countries, but not the main ones where my where my uh, viewers are at. So when I see all these these uh, YouTube videos, and some of them had ads and some of them don't, the only way those ads can get there is because they use one of these songs that has an well, ad. Two ways. One one is because the song ha says it's going to have an ad, or the other is that when we talk about it, they activated ads so that they can make money off of their own video. So good luck finding a real song from a real artist that I can use in who? Oh, okay, well. It's all the instrumental stuff mostly. So anyway, that's the audio library and um Yeah, but look at this. This is Gotan Project's version of it. Oh, okay, okay. So, so that's so in some cases that's acceptable because they have an agreement with the original owner. Yeah, they okay. have a license for that song. So if you use their version of the song, which might be sound completely different, right? Then but in the case to... like you had one hold your hand, there were like yeah several. There was something from Glee and something from something else. Yeah. Know? Potentially use that if you want. Yeah. Okay. It's just got to be that version. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, um, we don't have very much to look at in translation, so I'm going to skip it. In analytics, uh, again, not very much to look at it because it's a new account. But here, I see all of this detail about. Uh, what are what are the number of hits that I've gotten recently and my likes and dislikes and all of that so I can see it in general under overview. Then I can go in in detail for it to show me uh, how long have people watched, demographics, location, traffic sources. Traffic sources is one of the most valuable things, so I'll put it in the notes here. But this won't be valuable to you until you start to use YouTube. So if you look under analytics, stats, on your videos after you upload videos and they exist for a while I cannot define what a what a while is it depends but maybe after a few days you start to get traffic and then you start to get stats well let's say we've had this YouTube for a month I uploaded one video I've had it for a month maybe I have enough stats to look at one of the important ones is traffic sources. Where are people coming from to watch me, to watch my videos? It'll break it down to tell you, percentage-wise, most people are coming from Twitter to watch your videos. Most people watch your videos on YouTube after doing a search in YouTube. Because remember, we have search. Up on search here, I search for unboxing whatever. And it will tell you what those search terms were. It can tell you the popular search terms. I can tell you the popular search terms people used. Valuable because you can then create videos on the on based based on those terms and use those terms in your title, 
description keywords. So I don't have anything meaningful to show you on this account. Uh, let me go to another account over here where I do have some data to show you. In this other account that I have, I have a variety of YouTube channels that I that I manage. Um, just as an example over here. So again, on this one, this is the example of uh, on my personal one. Uh, so this is the one about my hobbies. So uh, comic books. Uh, Magic the Gathering, that, that game. Um, so this account here has got 98,000 views, it's about to be 99,320 subscribers. The stats here show within the last 28 days there were 14,000 minutes watched. The stats here, I always thought they were kind of weird that they, that, they, that they show you stats in terms of time watched, number of views, but also time. So, you know, what's kind of kind of like to me, what's the purpose of knowing that 14,000 minutes have been watched? I would care more about the number of people and such. And would that be because they, in case someone just clicked on and clicked off to give you a sense that people were actually watching? They count a view after some amount of time, which I believe is 30 seconds. So if they just watched it for five seconds and left, they wouldn't really count and it wouldn't really register. So there is some value to that number. It's just that it almost seems like, wow, 14,000 minutes. So what? I care more about number of views and number of people. And it shows here nearly 4,000 views in this last month. And yes, that is a person that could watch the video seven times. Well, that's not so bad. A person liked the video enough that they watched it seven times. Okay, I, I clicked my own video 12 times. Well, who cares? I wasted time, and, I, and I've got an elevated number, but who cares? Subscribers within this time period, uh, the number, the, the spike above them, the, that little line, uh, you can't see it, but there's a little line there, is subscribers, and then the number below it is unsubscribers. So sometimes people subscribe, sometimes they don't, then they unsubscribe, they don't like your content, that's fine. This particular one does not have monetization active, so there's no money being made on this. Uh, on this particular channel. But what I wanted to show was further analytics over here that as an overview here, compared to last month, and it'll tell you exactly how much, but compared to the last month there was slightly less number of minutes watched and slightly less duration of the videos and slightly less views in general than likes. So all of it, like just right now, by looking at that red number, oh, I'm, I'm panicking, it's less than last month. Not really. I can check the exact values. It might have been last month was 13,957, and now it's 52. But it tells you right here from last time. Um number of likes, comments, dislikes, subscribers. The most the the top 10 most watched videos in this time period is this one over here, 729 views, 19% of the views on this channel are on that video, and then the next one and so forth. So I started off this channel mostly focusing on comic books and technology. And now I'm seeing that people are much more interested in the game Magic the Gathering. The top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these top ten videos are all about that game. So that's kind of telling me perhaps people are more interested in that. I should create those kinds of videos. I have another one here, 101 Totally True Facts About the Ramones, and that one's got that one was like the number one video up until a few months ago. That one had thousands of views. And here's one on another musician. Most of the audience comes from the US. 
Where does one come up with 101 facts about the Ramones? By owning all of their albums and listening to all of their music over and over. <laughs> the populate, the gender here, uh, the playback location here, the traffic sources here, all of this data then is very useful to tell me most of the traffic comes from people searching in YouTube. Less comes from external sources. Well, what are those external sources? I can go in and see in details over here. External, clicking on that further, tells me a Google search. In this last time period, the majority of traffic that was coming outside of YouTube was coming from a Google search. Unknown is that they're in private mode and that sort of thing. Google Plus, Facebook, okay, so third most popular place where people come from. I hardly myself do anything personal at all on Facebook, so that's kind of surprising. I'm getting some amount of traffic within the last month from Facebook. From a Yahoo search, from WhatsApp, people sharing it on WhatsApp, I guess. And uh, does it go as far as telling you here? Okay, from the US, Australia, Czech Republic. California, so it goes down all the way here. California, then Oregon, then Pennsylvania, then Alabama have been the most popular locations. But over here, YouTube search, this is very valuable in terms of what are the keywords. So here we go. People are searching for these keywords, Comic-Con badge. People want to know about it. If I use that keyword in my title, in my description, in the video, it's the, top, it's the number three most popular um, type of search term. I see these two search terms. So that game, Magic, every few months there's new, there's new things about it. And I'm surprised here, something that is as passe as six months ago is still a top search. This right here is the latest version of it, came out last month. It's climbing up because at a certain point it was zero. But then now that one might be the higher search term, but still something from a few months ago is still popular. Well, maybe I want to create another video a sort of like six months later, here's another take on this topic. So these stats are incredibly valuable to see what has worked and what could guide you about what could work in the future. You can tell your popular your title, etc. <clears throat> Channel, you can browse this section on your own. Here's a variety of features that you can uh, set up. However, to activate all the best features, you have to do verification. Uh, I won't do it for this account. It's just an account that I use as an example for these classes. But verifying your YouTube account gives you more features. For example, the ability to do live streaming, to monetize or make money off of your channel. Right now I'm limited up to 15 minutes per video. If I want longer videos, I have to verify. The default will be that when I upload a video, it'll grab one shot of the video. If I want to upload a custom thumbnail, I have to verify. There's a lot of perks from verifying. Recommendation. Click on channel. And go through the verify process. You'll then get many more features.
This is the screen that it also tells you about copyright notifications and community guidelines. So this one's much more straightforward uh, in terms of it, um, it. If your copyrighted song is there, it'll tell you and how many times and such. The community guidelines is much more esoteric in terms of this is the part that the downside of all social media is that we're really trying to figure it out in terms of how useful and valuable it is, how positive or negative it is. There's a lot of negativity on social media because of the anonymous nature. People creating a lot of hate speech, harassment, etc. because it's anonymous. So in theory, these networks have community guidelines that if there are bad actors on a network, they can get removed. But sometimes it's very, very slow for it to work or work at all. And the frustrating part of it is that when we think that we're in the right, and we do everything correctly, and then something happens. Maybe there's like a false report ab about our video. Someone didn't like it, and so they reported it as a bad video. So we have these guidelines that are supposed to tell us what is permissible or not. No hate speech or harassment and stuff like that. And so your account could be shut down if you get too many of these strikes. Under community, there's nothing to look at here, but if people were commenting on the on your um, on your videos, they would show up here. And what you can do with videos is you can approve them or not or delete them. You have the power to approve, delete comments on your videos. Recommendation is do it. Curate your content here. If someone writes something dumb or mean or nasty on your video, remove it. It's your video. It's not exactly your property because you're on, on YouTube's platform, but you're not infringing on anyone's free speech rights or anything like that. If you remove someone's comment or opinion or whatever from your video. You have that ability. So keep things on topic. Keep things nice. The way to really handle that very well is this is going to be sort of reactionary in terms of, um, or reactive, in terms of if I upload a video, it's open for anyone to comment on it, including spammers, off topic people, and such. So I have to react and I have to remove that. Well, there's a setting here that I would really recommend for you to think about changing. If you go over here to channel, and then you go to Upload Defaults. A good way to preemptively deal with negative comments. Channel Upload Defaults. Under this screen here, every time you upload a video, there's various things you need to do. You need to set the privacy of it, and we'll cover this in a, in a little later, category, etc. We'll cover all of that. But what I would say is right here, comments and ratings. It says allow comments all. So you have the ability to say no comments on any video. Don't allow anyone to say anything. So that'll prevent the spammers from spamming on your video. That'll prevent the haters from hating on your video. 
but that then creates a monologue. And remember a while ago I talked about dialogue versus monologue. A dialogue is back and forth. You create something, you get replies, you reply to the replies, you create a dialogue, a community. You, you build a community of potential customers. If you're a monologue and you only put out content but don't allow any replies or anything like that, you're just kind of talking at people and that doesn't work too well for us smaller companies. A big company like Coca-Cola can turn off all their comments and they don't care, they're still going to make money. But for us, I wouldn't turn off the comments. I would instead change it to one of these two. Allow all comments except potentially inappropriate comments. And potentially inappropriate is what YouTube defines within their rules. I would recommend instead approved. So no comments will appear until I approve them. Until I say, okay, I take a look at it, I say it's on topic, it's a good comment, I will allow it. If it's bad, negative, I can delete it and it never showed up, no one ever saw it, it's gone. Let me show an example on one of these channels that exists. So on the channel I have over here for our company, oh, here it is, okay. So uh, on this one, there's all of these comments that I, that I looked at first. I approve them or not, and often with a reply. I haven't checked, but apparently now there's nine more to review. So yeah, that would be an extra bit of effort. I've already got enough to do, creating the content and promoting. Now I've got to moderate. I would recommend it because it's going to keep things on topic. Let's see what people are saying over here. It tells you which video has the comment, what it is, then you can, uh, you can uh, approve it, you can delete it, or you can uh, mark it. So what's this one? Community Interactive. Do you guys have an online community forum website, like somewhat for Danny Webb? I can contribute about what I know. Okay, so... That particular comment uploaded one day ago seems to be that the person is doing self-promotion. They want to write articles on our website, but they mention someone else's website. I would be perfectly fine, and most likely what I'm going to do for here is delete that. I'm not going to let that comment go on to our video. I don't want to give free publicity to dannyweb.com. I don't know what it is. I don't re really want to click on it in, in public. I don't know what it's, where it's going to take me. But I would go check that link and see if it's okay if I want that link associated with my video. It's sort of leaning towards spam for me. I would go over to see who is this person, what's their channel. Again, I won't check that in public, but uh, I'm leaning towards not allowing that. What if we have JDK and SDK both? Where do we install them? So that's a little bit of tech support answer that I might answer. So I'll click approve that one and then reply to them. So do you have under this login that you have now, do you have multiple channels? Yes. So you see all of these channels over here are ones that I can edit. OK, so where does it show? show you which channel those comments are going to. Right now the icon on the top right corner shows me which channel I'm logged into and that's where the comments are going to. So when I have multiple accounts, if I switch to another account, the icon up here shows I'm on that account and then the comments are applicable to that account. Uh, but can't you have, you can have more than one channel with the same email address. Mm -hmm. If you don't see, like on my case, I see here the ability to switch between all of these channels. All of these channels are linked to one email account. 
so I'm able to, to switch between them. If you don't see multiple channels, you're going to go over to your options here, settings, and then there'll be a place here to add more channels. See all my channels or create new channels. So with an existing email address, I've created one channel at least, then I can go to the settings up here and then create more channels. And then I switch between them. So those are some up upload defaults that I would recommend to you. Live streaming, nothing really to look at here at the moment. If I have everything set up, I could start to broadcast live. Video manager, if I've got any videos, I would have them here to edit them and so forth. And then back on dashboard. So let's take one more break, and when we come back, we'll um, upload a video, then we'll talk about optimizing the video and other tips and tricks for that. It's uh, 12.30, we'll be back at 12.40.